26 years old, and um, she described Freud as having incredible insight. And she's quoted as saying, the older I get, the more like the picture I become. And this is so typical of Freud's work. The brush stroke here, rather flat, broad brushes. Again, very, very confident. Striking, absolutely striking. And this is as close as I'll ever get to Lucy and Freud. Look, <laughs> nearly touching it. The family continued the tradition of using artists and the style of the day with this incredible portrait of Laura Burlington, daughter-in-law of the current Duke. William, the Duke's son, commissioned a digital portrait of Laura by artist Michael Craig Martin. And this was unveiled at Chatsworth in 2010. There are nine areas where the c**ks keep changing on this installation. It's a wonderful likeness, but I've been told you could stand here all day long and probably never see the same colour combination twice because there's just millions of different variations. As you can see, the background's changing there, the lips are changing, the skin tone, the colours. It's going to alter again. It really is a wonderful likeness, but also it just reflects the fast-moving times which we live today. It's a perfect example of contemporary art. At our valuation day at Queen Elizabeth's Grammar School in Ashbourne, Michael and I are excited about a collection of pocket watches. But there's more where they came from. Do you live far? Um, stone, stone. Stone. I could go back and get them. If you, yeah, yeah. Yeah, do you mind? Then no, no. we could put them in as one lot or separate them yeah. accordingly. Yeah. That would be a couple of hours to get there. Thank you. Gosh. <laughs> That's okay, isn't it? We're here all day. Someone's on a mission, they're going to drive now for two hours to get the rest of the collection. <laughs> 39 of them. Drive carefully. I will do, yeah. Before they came back, Michael's just got time for another valuation, and Pamela's collection of brushes has caught his eye. If I ever needed a hairbrush, now would be the perfect time to have one. Thank you for bringing in this wonderful um, dressing table set and other pieces. Um, can I ask you where did you get it from? Um, they were from my mother's. I used to see them on her dressing table and I used to have to polish them. Oh. Yes. D does that bring back fond memories or...? Sort of. <laughs> the hallmarks in this case, if we have a look, uh, W and H, which is the mark of Walker and Hall, who were manufacturers in both Birmingham and Sheffield. And we've got the Birmingham marks on this from 1915 to 16. We can show what's very uncommercial at the moment, which is engine turn silver backs. Oh. Nobody really wants those. They're made in huge numbers. Right. They're quite light quality, oh. not worth much at all. Then you go from the middle or the bottom range to the top quality, um, which is this wonderful tortoiseshell backing. It is tortoiseshell. It is tortoiseshell. This will be laid over a coloured ground, probably yellow, to bring out these flecks here. Oh. And then you've got this wonderful, I mean, most attractive inlay into it. It's a wonderful set. The most important thing is that you've got the mirror, because that is the most commercial thing now. People right. are a little bit queasy about using other people's brushes. Um, and if you want to get that brush refitted uh, with a new block and bristles, that can be 30 or 40 pounds, which, I mean, you really want to have it done. Yeah. Um, any idea of the value of it? Not at all, no. Not at um, all. I think those pieces will just add into them as a lot, just for a little bit of interest. Right. This set of five are going to be about 100 to 150 pounds at auction. Right, so, right, um, lovely. Why Thank now you. have you decided to sell them? Well, I'm clearing cupboards out, decluttering, as they say, and um, I don't suppose the family will want them, so... Other people's brushes again, yes, isn't it? Yes, and they certainly won't want to polish them like I did. <laughs> well, yes. let's hope someone's got their polishing mitts on at the yes. auction and isn't restrained by the thought of cleaning them. If you want to take part in Flog It, this is where it begins, our valuation days. Some of these people will go through to the auction later on in the show and hopefully make a lot of money. And to find out where we're going to be, log on to bbc.co.uk forward slash flock it. Follow the links and hopefully we'll be coming to a town very near you soon. Kathleen and Ralph took that advice and have brought something most viewers will recognise.
Log it favourite. It is, of course, a piece of... Warcraft. Exactly, and I'm sure the viewers at home are shouting that at the television <laughs> as we speak. What I like about the piece that you've brought in is it's it's small, uh, good sort of starter piece, shall we say, for mm. the collectors, uh, yeah. any sort of you know young collectors out there who are looking for something. And I like the yellow ground as well, because mm. most of the time it's in that sort of very dark blue, blue. ground. Yes. Is Moorcroft something you could collect, Kathleen? I've got uh, two pieces. Okay, yeah. and is there a certain pattern that you collect Just or the colours? An enemy pattern. Yeah. Yes, well, you've identified the pattern for me as well. That's Thank great. You. Thank you very much. Now, uh, we'll take the cover off. It's a sort of ginger jar and cover, yes. I would call it. Ginger yeah. jar. Let's take the, the cover off. Uh, and I can see here we've got a, a paper label, yes. the original paper label there. The late Queen Mary is 1953 yes. to 1978, is when mm. they used this label. Yes. So I suppose in the big scheme of things as far as the collectors are concerned mm. it is quite a late piece. Yes. Uh, yeah. you know, they, they tend to, to, to like the sort of uh, you know earlier 20th yes. century pieces. Um, and I'll just turn the, the, the base up again and I see again you've got here again another uh, example label. of the paper label mm. there. So that ties yes. in nicely. Uh, and well, why yeah. have you decided to sell it now? Is it as Ralph told you I don't well, like them all. I don't like him dusting and I don't want him to break it. <laughs> oh blaming you <laughs> Ralph. <laughs> yeah are you? Well you know what the answer to that? Don't dust. Don't dust. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, like I say, it's a perfect sort of entrance level piece yes. for, for, for the starter collector. Yes. And I would value it as such. I think let's go for that classic 8120, straddle that £100 mark. Yes. I've seen them make 100, 110, yes. sometimes a bit more, but I think let's play it safe. Yes. You know the name of the show. Let's hope that on the okay. day we flog it for you. I'm sure we will. Moorcroft usually sells, although sometimes you flog it, things don't always go according to plan. <laughs> Ready? <laughs> this is... And then they're not... And, they're not. Um, and I, I've never seen one so big before. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I looked up, sorry. Let's do that again. Beryl, thank you so much for talking to me. BBC.co.uk BBC what? I'm not applauding myself. No. Are you sure? I'm delusional. I thought it was for me. Stop At the Royal Queen Elizabeth <laughs> Astro, whatever it is, football game. <laughs> it's too near lunchtime. Action. The town comes out in force for the, the town in Ashbourne, Derbyshire. <laughs> oh, it's getting worse, isn't it? <laughs> I've waited a long time to meet you. I have to just watch on the television. <laughs> <laughs> OK, let's do that again. <laughs> Michael's back on form next with Carol's completed collection of watches. It was well worth that two-hour trek to go and get them. Carol, do you know what the time is? I have no idea. <laughs> it's a long time since I've seen a, a collection of watches as impressive and vast as this on Flog It. Um, no doubt to say, there must be a collector in the family somewhere. They belong to my father before he passed away. Did he have a particular approach to collecting, or was it anything, anything or everything? Anything, anything and everything. Those are the best sorts of collections, yeah. <laughs> really. Well, um, I won't tell you about each one individually, no. <laughs> because the programme only lasts 45 minutes, <laughs> and I don't think we'd get it done there. Mm -hmm. What I've done is I've picked out a couple of the most interesting yeah. watches that your father had, this, I think, you can immediately tell is the earliest because of the size of it. Basically, should be a pear-cased watch. So if we open it here... Oh, and that's lovely. That's something collectors look for, watch papers. Oh, right, yes. Whenever you took your watch in to be repaired, um, the watchmaker would put a little panel there and it can give you the history of a watch, which is lovely. Um, you've probably seen the movement inside this, haven't you? Many... I haven't looked, no. No? I'm surprised. <laughs> Well, that's nice. We've got the hallmarks there for London, 1838. So it's a good early 19th century watch. And then we've got, I think if your father either repaired this or cleaned this, he did a wonderful job on it. Oh, he was very um, careful with them. That is a nice watch on its own for a collector to go at. The next thing, of course, we've got are the gold watches. Yeah. Because everyone knows gold is incredibly uh, saleable at the moment. And we've got this nice little slim... 1920s, 1930s, gentleman pocket watch. And then we've got this funny little fellow, which is actually a conversion. And if we can get it open to show the face. It's a pocket watch form, but it's had these bars added yeah. to work as a wristwatch. Um, why now have you decided to 
Well, with my dad passing away Why? suddenly, um, we want to raise money now for a gravestone for him. Oh, what a worthy cause. Yeah, oh, no so pressure. the watches are going back to him. In a sense, yes, isn't that yeah. wonderful? Well, I think at auction, we've got to think of these probably as four separate lots. Right. The first and largest lot are these silver gentlemen's open face pocket watches. They range in date from about 1880 right up to about 1920. And a lot are metal cased rather than yeah. silver cased. Let's put them in at 250 to 400 pounds. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the next group back, if you like, are the gilt metal cased watches. Yeah. Sadly, I wish those 12 were gold. Oh, yeah, I'm me. <laughs> um, so again, if we say 150 to 250 pounds, yeah. and I hope they'll do better. Yeah. Then we get to the more sort of commercial collectible lots. Right. Um, the little gold watches, they're not very heavy in gold weight. So we put those in at about 100 to 150 for the pair. And then probably my favourites, which is <laughs> the early fusee. Um, I mean, I really think if you're a watch collector, you, you want to own that. It's in lovely condition. You've got the chain with it in the later fob. Um, let's put that in at two to three hundred pounds. Let's put a reserve of say 180 on it. Um, let's see how they do over a period of time by the time the auctioneers finish selling all of them. <laughs> <laughs> That's the last valuation of this show, which means it's time to put those valuations to the test. They're going to go under the hammer. So let's get off to the auction room. And we're taking with us Pamela's Victorian hairbrushes, well, Kathleen and Ralph's Moorcroft ginger jar, and Carol's father's huge collection of watches. Hanson's value as an auctioneer is have set up in Mackworth House Hotel for the auction, and on the rostrum are David Greatwood and Charles Hanson, who is also excited about this extensive watch collection. Our expert Michael really had his work cut out at the valuation day. Carol came in with a massive great big collection of pocket watches, as you can see. Fantastic. But Michael split them up into four obvious lots, really. Any of them going to fly away? Yes. Go on, tell me which one. Wait and see. Oh, no, come on, please. Come on, let's into a secret. Go on. I think the biggest, boldest the bag silver of ones. silver ones will do really, really well. Because there is so much there for the money, and when you add up all the silver content... Yeah. It's well worth it. Yeah. It looks to me worth a lot more than £400. It ought to make a lot more than £400. Double? Let's wait and see. You never know. Oh, gosh. <laughs> <laughs> you never know. Oh, the suspense. Yes. Of course, it will be down to the bidders whether the watches fly or not when they go under the hammer. But first, let's test the waters with this classic piece of Moorcroft. Why? If everybody else is buying, why are you selling? Because I'm trying to break it now. Oh, are older. you? Yes. You're getting up to look at you. <laughs> 50. So, 50, yeah. Yeah? <laughs> right answer for the <laughs> Ralph doesn't look bad for 48 either. I'm not really, I'm not, I'm really going to ask you, Kathleen, how old you are, don't worry. <laughs> well, let's see what the people here in Derbyshire think of your bit of more yes. Going under the hammer right now. Is the Moorcroft pottery an enemy, enemy pattern ginger jar and cover? This large one, no small one, there we go. <coughs> on the yellow ground, this very nice um, ginger jar and cover on the yellow ground, there we go, 295, and I'm straight in at uh, 110 pounds, I think. Straight in, that's great. 110, I have at 110. Where's 20? I had 110 with me at 110. I had 110. On 20, I had 120, where's 130? I had 120, I'll take 130 now. 130, you sure? At 130, with me on commission at 130. You're out in the room and on the phone at 130 pound last chance at 130. It's gone down at 130. That's good. You'll settle for yes. that, won't you? Yes. Very, very nice. Yeah. Good. And the money will come in useful to every the grandchildren. House. Oh, is the money going towards the yes. grandchildren? How many have you got? Two. One to teach and one to study in medicine at the university at Nottingham. Okay. Uh, so one needs the money and one doesn't. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not a huge surprise for us, but a welcome one for Ralph and Kathleen's grandchildren. Can Pamela's dressing table set continue our success? They can be difficult to sell, but we all think they will have some interest. 
Pamela, good luck. Good Thank luck. You. This is the start of Pamela's decluttering today in the auction room. Is it your first auction? It is. And what do you think? What do you think? Sum it up. Very, very interesting. It's a lot of people. Yes, It's lovely. hot in here, isn't it? Yes, as well? it is. Temperatures are rising. Pressure's on, Michael. I've no pressure to put the silver. It's <laughs> lovely, isn't it? A very fine George V um, silver and tortoiseshell back five piece dressing table set. Very nice collection of um, dressing table brushes and mirrors. Silver and tortoiseshell back five piece dressing yeah, table set. Nice set for, uh, five. And then, of course, we've got another three items as, as well. Various dates and makers. And um, interest here at 